Hi, I am Anna Nettleship and this is a presentation on voluntary carbon offsetting in regards to aviation, a contemporary issue at the moment. Firstly, I will just explain what carbon offsetting is. As quoted here by Bodrick, carbon offsetting is an economic exchange between two participants, a transaction with money moving in one direction and emission rights quantified in tonnes of CO2 in the other. Basically, this means a voluntary offset is a personal contribution towards a certified scheme such as a tree plantation in order to counteract the carbon emissions you create. The projects also have other benefits, hope, like helping the local economies and alleviating the problem of global forestry depletion. One of the first carbon offsetting projects was the Chapayas project in Mexico in 1997. This was a three-year agreement for farmers to develop and preserve a forest and agriculture in order to offset the carbon emissions from Formula One racing. Carbon emissions are those created from the burning of fossil fuels such as coal and natural gases that we use on a daily basis and as part of everyday life to create heat, light and fuel. Quite simply, life as we know it would not be possible without these. Carbon is a crucial factor for life on Earth that is a major component to many minerals and biological compounds. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, however, is the one related to the warming of the atmosphere. There has always been a natural carbon cycle, shown here, where there is movement of carbon between land, the atmosphere and the oceans. But as the world's population has grown and there have been natural and technological advances, carbon emission production has increased to such a level that it cannot be biologically recycled, in turn creating a build-up in the ozone layer which has proven to have aided the global warming and the damage caused to the ozone layer. The period from 1995 to 2006 has been the warmest since records began in 1850. During this time, the temperature rose an average of 0.74%. It is suggested that a further 2% could result in permanent damage to the natural coral reefs, floods for over 3 billion people, starvation for an extra 220 million, and have serious effects on the world's food, plantations and crops. If we want to continue living on the planet as it is today, drastic action needs to be taken in order to reduce the carbon emissions by at least 10%. This has obviously highlighted major concerns worldwide and many governments are working in partnership to try and reduce emissions. The EU itself has stated they wish to achieve a 30% decrease by 2020. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCC, introduced the Kyoto Protocol, initially in 1997 and then into force in 2005. The protocol is an international treaty between industrialised countries to reduce carbon emissions. The protocol also introduced other market-based mechanisms in which countries can help meet their targets. The international emission trading, which is trading between countries in order to gain the correct level of emissions. Clean development mechanism, are carbon emissions projects such as tree plantations to help aid the natural cycle of carbon reduction and joint implementation where developed countries invest in less developed countries in projects. Voluntary carbon offsetting schemes are similar to the clean development mechanisms. There are different forms of offsets including emissions allowance, reductions units and verified emissions reductions and they each have a different level of credibility, but all projects should be verified by the Emissions Reduction Scheme. The first and biggest scheme in the world is the EU Emissions Trading Scheme, which was introduced in 2005. It now includes 31 countries and covers over 11,000 factories, power stations and airlines. The International Air Transport Association also teamed up with Solar Vision in 2008, creating a partnership for a zero carbon emission future for air travel setting a vision to eliminate air polluting emissions within 50 years, which brings me on nicely to the travel and tourism industry. Carbon emissions are created by each of us daily, but the tour tourism industry has been put under a lot of pressure, and whilst there are several methods of transport used in tourism, car, train, coach and aeroplane, it's been the aviation industry that has had the most pressure. We have all seen the lines behind the planes in the sky. These are known as contrails, which are condensation trails and leave an imprint in the ozone layer. Air travel isn't the only way to travel, but this diagram here clearly shows the difference of CO2 emissions produced by taking different forms of transport 
and why air travel is concerning. The most efficient method of transport is by train. It takes 10,321 miles to create one tonne of CO2. It takes 5,791 miles for a bus to create the same and 5,399 for an aeroplane. Cars, however, only travel 3,001 miles and can also create the same amount. Tourism is one of the biggest and fastest growing global industries. It has flourished even through the economic crisis and that has major concerns. The United Nations World Tourism Organization also has strict guidelines on sustainable tourism development with regards to the natural environment. Flights are the fastest and most convenient way to travel and according to figures published by Mintel, there were 1.87 million tourist flights taken in 2013 and 2.2 billion annual flights in total. There have been many factors contributing to higher passenger numbers, such as easier accessibility. The distribution channel is so much more direct now. Flights can be bought directly online by a passenger. Also, the introduction of low-cost budget airlines has increased passenger numbers, such as Ryanair and EasyJet. Business trips are also much more frequent and they tend to use the budget airlines too. And some people even commute to work using air travel. Recent trends also suggest that people are taking more short breaks each year as opposed to longer duration holidays. The whole air travel market has become hypermobile. Yet surprisingly, as, and as suggested by Gosling and Upham, currently only 2-3% of the global population do actually fly. In response to this pressure, some travel agencies and airlines have introduced voluntary carbon offsetting. Figures published by Mintel indicate that currently 20% of passengers worry about the environmental impact of flying, with business travels being most concerned, and 7% of flyers actually commit to carbon offsetting schemes. According to a story by Muir, into traveller behaviours towards carbon offsetting, is the ecocentric travellers that are most likely to contribute, and mainly older females. Here is an advertisement from Qantas Airlines for the scheme that they've introduced. British Airways, one of the bigger UK airlines, have also introduced a scheme. As shown here from their website, there is a choice to donate a set amount or indicate what you like. In a bid to amplify offsetting schemes, ITA have recently issued guidelines for their usage and currently have over 30 me members. However, voluntary offsetting schemes have been widely criticised because of their lack of transparency and the confusion and complexity of how they work, and also because of the wide variety of schemes. There have been questions as to whether the actual flyer is committed to such schemes as there is such a low take-up. Some airlines, such as First Choice, introduced schemes and then scrapped them as they felt there wasn't enough take-up. The whole concept of the schemes has also been criticised as they do not actually reduce carbon emissions, they just actually compensate or are an action to diminish guilt.
Furthermore, airline manufacturers are under pressure to become more economical. Aeroplanes today are actually 40% more efficient than those flying 20 years ago. And many producers take part in the Clean Sky Project, which is a public-private partnership aimed to speed up the technological developments and to reduce the environmental footprint of aviation. On the other hand, and as highlighted by MPs in a travel report by Mintel, are the airlines doing enough to promote such schemes as voluntary carbon offsetting? Did you know about them? Have you ever seen the option when booking flights or is there just so many other options that you simply overlook them? The biggest concern of all is whose responsibility is it anyway? Is it fair to put the onus of pollution onto the consumer, the traveller, or should it be the airline as the polluter? And, or quite controversially, has this just become another political economy and is this all a scam to make money out of thin air? Thank you.